Before coming to Australia from Iraq, Nishat Jarala had hardly ever swam. I was uh, feeling afraid because I couldn't swim and then after a few weeks and then I feel very comfortable. 19-year-old Nishat, along with his parents and siblings, have called Armadale home since 2018 after fleeing northern Iraq. They're among the more than 600 Azidis who've settled here over recent years. So it was like, right, if you're going to be an Aussie, you need to learn to swim. James started offering free lessons to a handful of Azidi kids before things snowballed. Word spread throughout the Azidi community and before we knew it, we had, you know, over 100. Nishat was one of them. Now he works as a swim teacher, coaching Azidi and non-Azidi kids. I enjoy teaching. It's good to help the, your community and other, other communities and cultures. I'm proud for Nash, I'm proud for the Azidis, and I guess I'm proud for, for us here at, at the swim school. The Yazidi are a distinct ethnic and religious group spread across countries, including Iraq and Syria. In 2014, Islamic State terrorists killed thousands, starting in the city of Sinjar, in what United Nations investigators found was a genocide. ISIS stormed the city and killed most people. Those that escaped fled into the mountains um, where they stayed for, for days um, with no food or water. More than 4,000 Azidi refugees have come to Australia since then. Tim Gray leads one of the organisations contracted to help families adjust to life in Armadale. It's been a really interesting ride. Um, there's been challenges, there's been really great success stories. On a whole, settlement has gone really positively here in, in Armadale. The inland city was chosen as a resettlement town after a campaign by local residents and council. They've really evaluated to our school community and to the Armadale community more broadly. The town's Azidi population is young, and that's made local schools critical to the success or failure of the regional resettlement experiment. The Intensive English Centre has been a really great addition. Already, more than 100 kids have graduated from the purpose-built Intensive English Language School. The simple interest also, so compound and interest five years, simple interest six years. Okay. They've also been schooled in the Australian way of life. <laughs> a lot of our Azadi students are very afraid of dogs. Um, so we have an education support dog here, Ralph, um, and he's often been used as a way to explain to students how to approach a dog or animals more generally. He's a good dog, is he? Yeah, he's good. Hello, my name is Raad Hamoud Darwish. I go to high school. This school is very good, like, teachers are good, they're very kind to us. They try to help as much as they can. Rad has graduated from the language school to the mainstream Armadale Secondary College. Outside school, his passion is volleyball. He learned to play on the streets of a refugee camp before coming to Australia. Since then, he's represented the region at state championships. Feels very good, yeah, representing Armidale. Sport has been a really, really important part of their, their inclusivity and being able to be a conduit for them within our local community. Azidi businesses are starting to spring up. While more and more people are entering the workforce, including some like Manal Kadida, for the first time. 
I never work in Iraq, just like help my mom and clean at home and look after my siblings. Manal has turned years of home cooking into an income after a local hotel operator added what's believed to be Australia's only Yazidi restaurant. <laughs> I feel happy when I make for Australian people Iraqi food. When they eat and then come in the kitchen, they say thank you for the food, and so delicious. We've also had a couple of community members buy a house and so that has been a real motivating factor for people to work because they want to buy a house. They've got on board with the Great Australian Dream. They have gotten on board with the Great Australian Dream. There have been challenges, transport and interpreting services among them, along with treating ongoing trauma. But the community's overwhelming feeling is one of finally being safe. Thank you so much for everything and for Australia's help us. That means a lot to us when they welcomed us and helped us about anything we've done it so far. For Nishat and Rad, they're now daring to dream of taking their football and volleyball prowess from Armadale to a much bigger arena. My dream is play for Australia one day. That's my goal in life, to become a professional footballer. But in Australia, it's just, it's all about trying hard. So I train every day, trying my best. I think he's a small example of what the whole Azidi community have to offer. The sky's the limit. They can do whatever they like. Yeah, amazing. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.